Uh, there was a quick one I'll uh, mention. That, you see, you know, some of these people... Now, people may say I should not be on social media. To which I would say, <laughs> it's not your dad's internet, but... You know, there's reasons why some imams... You see, they don't understand the culture of where, of their audience, especially sometimes from the Muslim world. Sheikh, I say Sheikh, I don't really accept him as a Sheikh, but, mm, you know, he's, he, he obviously, he has some knowledge. I'm not saying he's he's not like a common person, like he definitely has read certain books and things like and he teaches presents himself as a sheikh sheikh hassan katani now he is from a household of many sheikh like so it's a huge family uh in uh north africa in morocco specifically that for you know for decades if not maybe a couple of centuries have had great scholars great muhaddithin great people who memorize absolute hadith and all of this Fast forward to the current day and age, there still are several amongst that whole, because it's a huge family, huge family within Morocco, the Katani family, um, involved in politics, involved in all kinds of things. But you've got amongst them these, these two, uh, there's two brothers in this particular family. You've got Hamza Katani and Hassan Katani. Now, Hamza Katani is different. He uh is quite sufi inclined and um and i feel and and definitely more learned as well but and then you've got hassan katani who is not really that learned a bit more uh, when i say that learned as in like proper the way you expect from the arab world you know you expect like because when you're looking at that world you're expecting a different level of caliber so he's not on that level but he's obviously like of an Ustad status, he has gone through a certain amount of things and certain amount of learning. He is coming from more a Salafi background, a Wahhabi kind of perspective. Um, he seems to have in the last um, maybe decade or so, or less than a decade, but seems to have embraced the Maliki Madhab, seems to have taught that and uh, really use that as a as a tool to kind of I suppose teach people in Europe, teach people in America, and he teaches online. But cello, you know, there's not whatever you know. If people want to teach, they want to do things up to them. Really, you know, it's nobody else's business, and I've got nothing against that. Now, here is a clip, however, where he's speaking on certain uh, issues, and it gets into racism. I don't know if you guys can hear this. She is an old woman or black. Or Says this is an old black, black or older These black woman. People don't pay attention to her. But if she's a very beautiful black, that means dark skinned woman, we don't call it, we don't say that she's allowed to be uncovered near people. He's talking about maybe maids or. Uh, or uh, slaves in the days of slavery, or stuff like that. But even dark-skinned people, near dark-skinned people, they they desire each other. And there are <laughs> oh dark-skinned women that are very beautiful to other people. So don't, that's not a, actually... A, 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 actually, when you go back and see... When you go back and see, do these people really believe in... Freedom of speech, this part is about freedom of speech that that in the West. That is only a big fat lie. That is a big lie. Why? Because they are not allowed to discriminate homosexuality. So there's if no freedom of speech. If you speak about homosexuality, you will go to jail in, in, in Europe, in the West. Mm. Therefore, there's no freedom of speech. If you speak about the Negroes between brackets or the black guys <laughs> and discriminate them... <laughs> and say that they are so-and-so, or make fun of them, you will go to jail. <laughs> what the hell is that? If you speak about the Jews... 
what the hell was that? <laughs> what the hell was that? I mean, the first part, the homosexual part, I thought, okay, well, you can understand culturally in the Arab world or in the Muslim world or in other countries, there's strong homophobia. So if you speak against homosexuality, you can go to jail. They're trying to say you haven't got freedom of speech. So, okay, you can, you know, see the angle he's coming from. At least you can, whether you agree with it or not, but you can understand, okay, he's trying to come from this angle because he's obviously, he would clearly condemn and speak against constantly homosexuality. So he's saying, well, you know, you can't do that in the West. So where's your freedom of speech? But then he's like, well, if you're to speak about the Negro, and you're thinking, what? <laughs> what the hell is he on about? What the hell? <laughs> it's not a laughing matter. What the hell is this guy on about? Seriously, this is a prime example of why people, when we speak of ulama in the West, scholars, Islamic scholars in the West, we need people who are indigenous to this culture who understand. Now, whether he meant something else, and that's just because his English is poor, uh, I don't know. On the first clip where he's speaking about a text about certain women that need to cover up, and he says, well, an old woman doesn't need to cover up, or a black woman doesn't need to cover up. And then he says, well, you know, look, this, um, you know, sometimes there are some uh, black women who can be beautiful to black people. And you think, ah, what the hell? he's making it worse. What the hell is he even saying? Like, that's so stupid. What the hell is that? You know, it's like, I think they can't help it. The, the anti-blackness so pours out of them. It's like, what, what does that even, whoa, 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 wait a minute. what does that even mean? That there's some dark skinned people that I'm sure they are attractive to some other dark skinned people. It's like, what? Does this guy actually, does he actually know what he's saying? <laughs> For God's sake. Honestly, and this is the problem that they, you see, this is why we have to be weary sometimes when we are, like, obviously, we, there are many scholars in, obviously, the Muslim world, and sure, by all means, benefit from them. But be weary. Don't blindly follow these people. And if they say something a bit, if they say something dumb and stupid, recognize it as dumb and stupid. Right. So don't be like now he, you see, he was saying, oh, but I'm reading this in some classical book. Now you have to understand, look, in the olden books, sorry, in the old, olden, <laughs> the golden book. Right. So in the old classical texts, you may find elements which are like you may find certain points that are utterly absurd. You may find anti-blackness in certain texts. There are certain fatawa where you will find this, where people will say things like like what he's reading. This text of like Sheikh Sidi Ahmed Zarruq or from the earlier scholars where they will say, oh, well, if a, uh, if it's a black woman, she doesn't need to cover up properly she doesn't need to do the hijab because people ain't that interested in her now you see when you read things like this the truth of the fact is that look those people those scholars right are a product of the environment the environment was wrong okay it had discrimination in it maybe that they I, I don't believe that those people were going around being cruel to people that were black and things like Maybe some were, but I don't believe those scholars were and things like that. But they had these views without even understanding anything bad about them. Because to them, 700 years ago, this is what the world was. So I'm not talking about trying to get that scholar and everybody demonize him. Because the scholar lived 700 years ago. People 700 years ago may have had these views, but they felt that that's the way the world was. But we can recognize the view today as wrong. We can say, look, that view is wrong. OK, this it's it's racist. It is unacceptable, but 
look, somebody said it 800 years ago. That's how they viewed the world. It's not about trying to make him, that person, a villain. Because that person wasn't, he was just speaking how his day and age spoke. So, okay, you, could, you know, he may have generally been a very intelligent and normal and absolutely a civil human being. So I'm not speaking about boycotting scholars. Obviously, I love our legacy generally, the whole fiqhi legacy. But it doesn't mean these people were perfect. They had blemishes. They had cultural biases. They had. So when we see something that's wrong, just acknowledge it. Say that, look, that's wrong. Fine. But otherwise, you know, the scholar in other things, you can take it. Don't You don't need to justify it. You don't need to kind of defend a stupidity that's like racist. And then to justify it in that way. <laughs> Where he's saying, look, that's just making it worse that, you know, look, there are some dark skinned people that, I'm sure some dark-skinned people must find them attractive. <laughs> it's like the guy is like, what the hell is he on about? Like that's just so that's so bang out of order saying that. Because, uh, but may okay, maybe English is English is the, you know he doesn't understand what he's saying, but that just comes back to prove the point. You need to really, we need to have indigenous scholars who understand the culture. People, with that, we're going to wrap this up. Right, that once again was... <laughs> His explanation, people. <laughs> this, this is the kind of, this is what he probably thought, you know, I've killed it with that response. He probably thought, you know what, the... You're right, the text was problematic, but my explanation just killed it. That, you know, obviously there's going to be some dark skinned people that will find that dark skinned uh, uh, woman attractive. <laughs> he probably felt like doing this after it. <laughs> He's like, I've just killed it. This, this is me. I've just like, poof, it's celebrating time now. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> anyway, people.